Hello, this is Al K0CN, and I'm here with another video about the Flex Radio. Today I'll be talking about the Smart SDR Slice Receiver as used with the Flex 6000 Signature Series Radio. Specifically, I intend to cover setting the slice receiver frequency, tuning, and using the RIT and XIT. I'll be using my Flex 6500 running Smart SDR version 1.10. You can find more specific information about the slice receiver by consulting your Flex 6000 Signature Series Smart SDR software user manual, starting with Section 7. In the Flex 6000 Signature Series radios, every signal present in the RF spectrum from 0 to 73 MHz is digitized by an SCU, a spectral capture unit, creating a data stream from 1 to 4 gigabytes of data per second. Your local computer or tablet running Smart SDR software will take this data and create a GUI or graphical user interface and present the operator with a pan adapter, a waterfall, a slice receiver, and some controls. The slice receiver on the flex radio represents a point or narrow portion of the RF spectrum data that has been selected or tuned to by the operator. The slice receiver will demodulate this data and present the operator with usable voice, CW, or digital signal information. In Smart SDR, the slice receiver is found on the pan adapter and consists of a vertical yellow or red line which is positioned on the exact frequency. Next to the line, you'll find a light blue column, which is called the Receive Filter. It graphically represents the passband of the receiver. At the top of the vertical line is a box called the flag. The flag contains a number of controls for the receiver and displays the digital frequency value and an S-meter. There is also an RX panel located on the right side of the pan adapter, which contains a digital frequency display of the receiver and similar controls to those found in the flag. These controls allow the operator to use the many Smart SDR Slice Receiver features. Now let's take a look at setting the Slice Receiver frequency. There are a number of ways to set the frequency, but the most direct is to enter the frequency from the computer keyboard by left-clicking on the digital frequency in either the flag or the RX panel, the display will change to show a light blue background around the numbers. In the U.S., enter the new numerical frequency value in megahertz with a period for the field separator, or with a comma in other countries, and then press Enter. You can also enter the frequency in kilohertz, but here you'll be limited to four or five digits. When you press the Enter key, the slice will jump to that frequency. If the frequency you enter is in a different band, the slice receiver will jump to that band and then the new frequency. One of the most common and basic tuning methods is the drag tuning method. The frequency of the slice can be changed by rolling the mouse pointer over the receive filter. The mouse pointer will change from an arrow to a hand, indicating the slice can be moved. While holding the mouse button down, move the pointer left or right. This will drag the slice receiver to a lower or higher frequency while the pan adapter remains stationary. By looking at the digital frequency value in the flag or in the RX panel, you can see the frequency as it changes. When you release the mouse button, the slice receiver will stop moving. The slice receive frequency changes caused by dragging will occur in steps as set by the step size control in the RX panel. The step size can be set by the operator in increments of 1 Hz to 2 kHz. Using this method, you can drag a slice receiver from signal to signal as they appear on the pan adapter. If you drag the slice to the edge of the pan adapter and hold it there, the slice will stop moving and the pan adapter will start to scroll past behind the slice. This is called pan edge tuning. Click tuning is another way of tuning the slice receiver. Position your mouse pointer on any point in the pan adapter or waterfall and using the mouse button double click. The slice receiver will jump to the frequency closest to the pointer depending on your step setting. When click tuning, an upper sideband or USB signal 
Position your pointer on the left side of the signal peak and double click. This will place the vertical yellow line on the left side of the peak and your receive filter will be on the right or upper side of the receive frequency. Here, you will receive the upper sideband signal. For lower sideband signals, or LSB, position your pointer on the right side of the signal peak. When you double click, the yellow line will appear on the right side of the peak. The filter will be on the left for lower sideband reception. For radio teletype, or RTTY reception, double click on the right side or mark side of the signal. This will position the slice receiver to receive the signal. If you're a contester, this works very well for search and pounce operation. You can jump from station to station as seen on your pan adapter without spending time in between. Next we have mouse wheel tuning. When the mouse scroll wheel is rolled forward, the active slice selected will move up in frequency. The movement will be in steps as set by the RX window step control. If you roll the wheel back, the receiver will move lower in frequency. This works very well in conjunction with click tuning. If you click tune a signal on the pan adapter, you may end up near but not exactly on the frequency you want because of the step tune increment. You can make fine tuning adjustments to reach the exact frequency desired by using the mouse wheel. The next tuning method we'll mention is using the flex control. The flex control is an accessory, an analog external device that's connected to your computer via USB cable. This device has a large control knob and can be programmed to perform several functions. By default, the main knob is used as a tuning knob, similar to the one found on a traditional radio. There are also three auxiliary programmable buttons on this control, which allow you to assign different functions for the main control knob. I have my flex control set to act as the main VFO tuning knob, and by pressing one of the auxiliary buttons, it will control my AF gain, the RIT frequency, or the XIT frequency. I'll talk more about this accessory in a later video. Finally, let's talk about the RIT and XIT controls. The RIT or Receiver Incremental Tuning and XIT or Transmit Incremental Tuning controls can be accessed on the Slice Flag tab. They can also be accessed on the RX panel. The incremental tuning controls allow the operator to temporarily change the receive or transmit frequency away from the slice frequency. This is of course very useful when trying to receive a signal that's drifted off or just plain off frequency, or when trying to position your transmit signal on the edge of a pileup. The RIT and XIT have on-off buttons and buttons to set the frequency offset in hertz. A zero control allows the operator to reset the frequency back to the original slice frequency. In the RIT, the yellow line represents the new offset frequency, and the red dotted line represents the original slice frequency. For the XIT, the red line also represents the offset transmit frequency, and the yellow line is the original slice frequency. Well, with that, I'll bring this video to a close. And I hope you found the information we've talked about to be useful. Wishing you all good luck and good DX. This is Al K0CN, and thanks for watching.